Hey, Gaming Geek here. Before we get started with this week's video, I just wanted to give a congratulations to Becker for winning uh, this last month's giveaway for our Patreon supporters. He won a set of these five 15mm 3D printed buildings that we can use for this game. So congratulations to him. For the month of August 2019, we're going to be giving away for our Patreon supporters. A one lucky winner will win another fat mat from Table War, a winner's choice. So go ahead and head on over to Patreon and become a supporter for your chance to win one of the gaming mats. All right, so welcome to episode seven of Painting with a Noob. I'm here with Roger, and today we're gonna to be tackling the knights, the mounted knights. And so I think they look fantastic. And so they do require a little bit more work because they're uh, bigger than the regular units. And also we'll do a close-up of these halberdiers, but we are not going to be showing you the painting tutorial for these guys because they're basic. And one of the things that we did want to receive feedback about is do you still want to see tutorials of the basic knights? Because there's a lot of them still. Yeah. We're still using the same techniques and so the videos that we've shown so far should give you enough idea of how to paint the basic uh, soldiers, foot soldiers, but it's fun to paint along with somebody, right? So we can get all of our minis painted. You can keep improving on these techniques. You keep going back and forth over them until you start getting comfortable. You know, I know when I leave here and I start going home and painting by myself without Gamer Geek, I'm like, gosh darn it, what was it that I did? And I'll actually go back and look at the video, right? And, and catch up on it. So again, I, I like that, that approach. Um, another shout out to Rob who does that with us uh, on his teaching videos. So uh, let us know, and we'll keep on going, and we'll just plow through this whole set. The Knights, we're actually going to introduce a new technique today called highlighting, mm -hmm. right? And just this Knight is the perfect uh, figure to do that with, with some of the folds in the cloth that goes over the horse's armor. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're starting to you know, keep building on our repertoire of, of techniques and, and getting prettier figures as we go along. That's right. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and dive right into the tutorial. All right, hi there. So uh, I'm going to try to re reproduce what Gamer Geek has uh, done with these glorious knights. Uh, so this is what the card looks like, and, and the painting scheme that we're we're following. We're not getting too too crazy or carried away. And uh, so let me go ahead and see if I can't reproduce some of these techniques. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab some of my slate gray because I'm going to make my horse the light gray color, and obviously. Um, you can make your horses uh, multiple different colors, mostly browns um, and a dark red or tan, any of those things. But uh, go ahead and vary it up a little bit. But I'm doing mine light gray. All right, so here I go. I'm going to start working on the body of the horse. Do we uh, paint those hooves a little different color, or do we leave those black? I left mine black. Okay, we're going to leave the hooves black. We're not going to worry about those. So we'll do one side of the horse here. And then I'll flip it over and, and do the other side. Getting his legs again. Get here a little better in the camera the back of this leg. Again I'm leaving the hooves alone. Get behind that leg. Yep. Okay, just trying to drag my paint. Uh, this hoof has kind of got a lot there to it. I don't know if you can see that. I want to put a little bit more paint over here. Yep. 
there's a line there for that hoof. He's a gray, light white horse, gray horse. Looks like I had enough paint there to get me going away. So get underneath the underside. Trying to push the, the brush away. You don't want to push it in. You want to pull it. Isn't that right? Gamer right. Geek, yep, pull that brush. Don't force it in, flick it out. That's how you fray the ends. And yeah, that, point faster. That's how you kill your brushes. Put some more water on this guy. Looks like I had a little too much paint there. Uh, paint, cheap paints are cheap. That's why we buy them. Don't be afraid to put out what you need and. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Okay, yeah, I thought that was his mouth at first, but there's a little bit of exposed hair on the horse, right, right under here, underneath all that and then mail. His jaw, and then his jawline underneath oh, the armor. Oh, yep, here we go. Right there, yep. right, there yep. right underneath that arm. Oh, and see, I messed up the, the line. Okay. Oh, boy, there's some tack there, too, I see. Probably just yep. paint paint over that. Nope, just like Not that, that, huh? Just like that. Okay, yep. and then I guess we get these tiny little ears. Yep. Cute little ears on the painter. Next, I'm going to tackle the support piece for the front legs of the horse. And to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what that's supposed to be, whether that's a stump. Um, I decided to just make it more like stone so I'm going to grab my dark gray and just brush it real quick and there's these grooves in there that um, again not entirely sure uh, what it is but just simply that's all that needs to happen next I'm going to go ahead and grab some white and do the um, underside of the cloth on the horse and then as well I'm going to do the um, inside of the shields And then uh, I'm going to switch actually to my finer brush and do these lines white as well. There we go. And then, where else is some of that flap going here? Looks like all of this, huh? Mm -hmm. Right in here, flapping in the wind. And a little bit under here. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's see this little line of it. It's going to be kind of hard to get. Here's our flap again. And I'll follow that line back out if I can. So that's a, a steady hand and a straight draw of the brush just right across that flap there. It's not going to be pretty, but I'm doing it. All right. Flap there. Looks like uh, in the back. Right here. Right. Yep. This is also part of that white. And looks like I got some gray from my previous horse rider. And then we got this little bit that's flapping up in the wind right here. Very cool. 
Very cool. So here we go. This is a really hard area to paint. Well, it's, not too, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. You kind of just barely move your brush in there. Get those little white sections. You don't want to get too carried away. But you are going to paint over that. So if you get some on that cross of the shield, you'll be all right. So there's a little bit underneath here too. You can't see that as much for the board, so I'm not going to worry about that as much. Yes, tell us tell us what it is, folks, when you see it. Oh, and a, and a shout out to the, uh-oh, getting out of the lines there. Uh, for telling us what kind of mail that padded was, this 14th century gabachos or something like that. I don't know, I couldn't pronounce it. But we did have a viewer write in telling us what our pikemen were wearing. Thank you for that. And okay, I'm going a little wide again. I don't have that nice daft touch. Getting out of lines here. This fine, fine work. Very hard for the noob. But we're gonna try and go over this. Oh boy, I'm the red that I'm putting on top of that should should help eliminate some of this uh messiness that I've got going on with with the painting here but now I'm gonna grab my burnt umber and do the saddle Thing yeah, we're just going to do the whole thing. Yeah. We're doing the saddle blanket and, and the, the saddle. and the saddle. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're out of the camera. Oh, out of the camera. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to hold it up here and paint at the same time. I don't have any skill. Okay, next I'm going to take my red and paint the cloth. And this is going to need two coats because you're putting it on black. And then here's the second coat and I basically only cover the spots that I want to highlight. I don't go over the whole thing again. But basically where the light would naturally fall and make it brighter. that I can paint over it now. Whoa. All right, that's some gooey paint. Yeah, there you go. Covered right over it. So just try to draw that line, right? Sorry, get next to that white and cover up my sins. I'm gonna use quite a bit of red here. Having a hard time with the consistency of this this red. Yeah, the army painter is a little runnier. Well, this one's gooier though. You think it's gooier? I thought it was. Yeah, than than these these cheaper, the cheaper paints. paints. Yeah. So, up, oh, up. Oh. 
Okay, get in there. You know, you're just, as, as a noob, you're going to have to just keep spinning and twisting your brush and your figure just so you can get those angles where it's easy for you to drag a color across and to get those straighter lines whereas more experienced painters don't have to their, their hands are steady and they can draw a straight line from any angle but not me alright I think we got this just draw that as few strokes as possible just touch it up there a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go with that. How about the edges of the shield? Yeah, you got to be super Yeah, careful. so now edges. we're going to try to do the edge here. Need a little bit more charge in the brush. Uh. I'm going to grab my avocado, do the base here. Use a bigger brush for this. So this is a point where I actually will spray this with protective matte varnish. Again, I use Tester's Dull Coat. So I'll go ahead and spray this and bring this back because I want everything else here is going to be silver and I want the silver to be shiny. All right, so this is all dry from the dull coat spray. And what I'm going to do now is grab a brush and dry brush on the silver. Brush, just go directly into the silver. And it is a little difficult to dry brush with silver because uh, silver tends to be pretty watery and thin, but mostly um, I am trying to get this armor on the horse. So just drag it down like this so that you're not getting the paint uh, into where each layer of armor goes to the next. So you leave a black line there. And then just be generous with the silver along the lance, like so. And then now while the brush is a little bit drier, go ahead, I just drag it down. Make sure to get his leg and his foot. And it's back and just drag it down and I see how I'm leaving this section black just for shading. Do the same with his helmet, just drag it down, get his breastplate there. So see how I left parts black where you have a border and even up here on the armor. I didn't completely cover the face, but left these spots black for um, shading, like so. So I'm going to start with this, the horses. Oh boy, and I'm I'm actually laying it on. I've got too much, too much paint on that brush. So I'm going to remove some. Try it again. Oh, you see how silver that got, guys? That's probably okay for the front. His eye is still exposed, so that's okay. I'm going to do right down the, the mane there. I want to get his face here a little bit more, I guess. Put some mail on that horse, huh? Okay. I think that's all right. Mm -hmm. Get down there at the thing. Charge up my brush here a little bit more. Start doing some of that armor. Trying not to put too much paint on the brush and pulling away from the mail so we don't get it up in the. Uh, oh, I just painted as gray. Gray thing. Alright, I'm going to charge up the brush a little bit more 
for the lance. So I'm showing you here. You can see the gray and the silver there, but on this side, I kind of went over that gray a little bit. You're not really going to notice. So these these figures are pretty forgiving. Once you start looking at them, I mean, you got to look pretty close. You know, we got these things right in the camera to see your mistake. So I wouldn't sweat every little mistake. My OCD in the past has kind of prevented me from actually doing some miniatures because I always want to get them so perfect. All right, I'm going to get get rid of some of the paint again and start doing the guy's mail. Again, I want to go down over the cracks and not up into the folds in his mail. Just dry brushing here. And guys, you know, these these little guys do take a while. I mean, you're going to spend a few hours painting, you know, a set of uh, halberders and, and things like that. You know, I'm still not quite finished with my own pikemen at home because I keep going back for some of these little details and painting uh, peasants alongside of them and the crossbowmen. Um, they're close to being done, and I'm, I'm probably spent, oh, close to three, maybe four hours. And uh, I hope to show you the results of that in our next video. We will be going to Gen Con, though. Yay, and there was much rejoicing. Let's go to Gen Con. Uh, so we we'll probably won't be having a video out for, you know, this, this coming week after this. But uh, stay tuned. There will be another one shortly. What do you think there? Is he a painted painted male? Looks painted. Looks painted, right? Get a little bit more in there and all right. For that fancy little frill that I'm just gonna put along the edge of his rein, taking a little bit of that yellow, taking my super fine brush, and gosh, gosh gully. You barely want to touch that thing. Uh, I think I got too much don't have that good hand that my friend gamer geek does but I'm trying yeah that looks good that's about as good as I can do um, you can see we didn't do two coats of paint so a lot of that black is still showing through from the base coat get some paint here so you want to barely just go over the tops of some of those folds folks just like this okay so just the edges okay I'm actually gonna put a little bit more red down there just a little highlight right right along those edges what about kinda of like you know we don't want a line we kinda of want it to blend in a little bit right mm -hmm. So I don't know. How do you th how do you think that turned out there? Looks good. Looks okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit more red to him right here, just because yeah, yeah. it's a little dark. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, it's not too hard. Okay. So there you have it. So here is the experienced painters. Gosh, he's so good. I envy him. But that's years of work, guys. Here's the noob. Yeah, you they can look tell. Pretty, they look pretty close. This is though. still going to look good on the table. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was fondling my spear tip too much. I don't have paint on my spear tip. Yeah, so we'll touch that up a little bit. But so there you go. There you have it, folks. Well, there you have it. Episode number seven's in the books. Again, we want to ask you guys if you want to see us paint more of the basic figures, uh, and if you want to paint along with us, please let us know. Otherwise, we're going to kind of move on and we're going to start progressing. You know, like, again, I, I find that painting alongside with a friend, and that's what we hope these videos are to you, is we're just your friends painting alongside with you. You can go back and you can keep looking at what we did and then mimic those techniques to produce the figures that we're producing. So uh, we've got a lot more base figures that we can do, a lot of the smaller guys. It's 900, over 900 figures with this set. We'd be happy to show you how we paint them with you. So give us feedback. Let us know if you want us to continue doing that. 
at the same time, we're going to start moving on into some more of the creatures now, right? And some of the larger figures. Yeah, and I thought you did a great job with the knight and um, continue to just um, improve as we do it more and more. And that's what I like about the 15 millimeter figures. They are so forgiving, right? They really are forgiving. I'm really enjoying painting them just because of their forgiveness. The, the knight that I just did was primed that black and we didn't do any wash. And as I'm sitting here looking at the figures just from the table view, I don't know which ones the expert did and which ones the noob did. Now, if we grab those and take a closer look, mm -hmm. even then it's going to be hard. But you saw from the close-ups uh, the little bit of detail that, that you'll see. Mm -hmm. But 90% of the time, you're going to be looking at the figure from <laughs> this the distance. Table, right here. So and your friends you are want... going to go, ooh and ah. You want to look at it from so, mostly how you're going to be seeing them when you play. So when you're looking at a whole group, like this looks awesome, right? This looks like an army on the table. Ta table ready. These are table ready me. So again, give us your feedback. We love your feedback. I love hearing from you guys. I love uh, responding to your comments and uh, letting us know what we can do better mm -hmm. to serve you. So thanks a lot. All right. We'll see you next time.